Welcome folks. This is an old gardenia. And this gardenia has a pretty good sized trunk. Tree weighs probably about 200, 250 pounds, give or take. Now, the interesting thing about this tree is that it is a gardenia. And of course, gardenias come in a couple different varieties. This one has the, I forget which one is which, but there's a the top branches are different than the trunk in which they have been grafted on. Um, now, of course, they look well established. The grafting points were many decades ago. Um, but the thing we need to focus on today is repairing the top graft points. This tree sat in about an hour north of Orlando for uh, a couple decades just in a greenhouse. Um, not much sun, not much care, not much attention. And of course, ah, that's crap. So we're gonna need to fix this big giant gaping hole. Now, the reason for this video is to show you, it's an old method, but it's not one that people use for some reason. And I'm struggling to really find out why. Um, I've used it for the last several years in my garden to repair holes for ficuses and big gaps. And uh, it works exceptionally well. So before we get involved into what we're going to do, let's think about what we want to do. If you look at the top of the tree from here, the angle of this branch, it'd be nice if we could bring that over here. And what do you know? Move around leaf, there we go. The tree will bend this way a little bit. So we're gonna do a couple different things, such as placing a screw here, um, a, a stainless screw that won't rust um, we're not actually going to be screwing through the wood, but we're just going to use it to prop this a little further away to give us a little more access into the big hole. Um, the big hole continues around the tree a little bit. Um, so we'll go ahead and actually looks kind of cool right there. It looks like a little dragon. Anyways, the, um, the product that we'll be installing in here will uh, we'll take care of that completely. But um, holding up this to get rid of some of that separation gone and get the branch in a better place will certainly help. Um, and the screw will help keep the wood in place while we're pouring everything in. All right, time to go get the product out, which is called Durham's Rock Hard Water Putty. Let's get it. Ta-da! This little ballsy guy is going to come in a powder format now this is a big container, this is the four pound container. Um, that will probably last uh, most artists uh, most of their career. Um, you can pick it up at Lowe's or Home Depot. Um, although Home Depot here stops carrying it, but Lowe's and Amazon always have it. Um, the four pound jug is like 10 bucks. The uh, one pound container of the powder is something like uh, four or five dollars, somewhere around there. Um, but anyways, it's really simple. The instructions are on the side. Take the powder, put it in a bowl, add water, mix. When it looks like toothpaste, you're done. Now I forgot my spoon, so let me go get that. Ta-da! Okay, so adding this stuff is really pretty simple. You, you want it to be um, kind of toothpaste-y. If you need it to be a little runnier, go for it. So what are we doing with this stuff? Since it takes a minute just to mix it up, we'll go ahead and explain what we're going to do. Essentially, you use this kind of like a, uh, a drywall hole filler in that you simply smear it into where you want it to go, it stays put, and then you're done. Um, a little more powder. By the way, we're mixing up a lot because it's a giant hole. Um, you probably won't need a whole ton. Uh, it goes pretty far. Anyways, so once you add this into the hole, it will uh, fill it, settle, smooth over, and start to dry. When it dries, it doesn't expand, it doesn't contract, it stays the exact same shape and size. Now that's incredibly important on a tree because as you want the cambium to be matching the deadwood, otherwise it won't callus over. If it doesn't callus over, you're just going to be left with a pile of this shit in your trunk, and that's just going to look kind of dumb over time. Now, 
This does remain this color once it's on the tree. So if you wanted to stain it using some India ink, you can also do that. And if you have a tree that's heavily prone to fungus, sometimes uh, I like to put a little bit of Lysol in here um, in place of some of the water. So that's a pretty good consistency for us right here. Now we go and uh, bring it back to the tree. By the way, one other quick note. Um, so once this does settle into the tree, you'll, we talked about how it doesn't expand or contract, and that's what we want, and that promotes the, uh, the callus growing over and allows the hole to eventually, over time, seal itself. Um, what is important to remember is that if you get any extras on the side of the tree, like let's say you're filling this hole here and you accidentally get some crap here, it's really simple. Just a little spray bottle with some water, mist, mist. The excess just runs right off. You can also sand it. You can also carve it. You can also paint it. A lot of people make little model cars out of it or model airplanes or um, all sorts of goofy stuff. It's really just a great rock-hard water putty. Okay, let's get started. We're going to take this bottle of water. If you've seen the video where it says peroxide, no life, that's just to scare her so she doesn't keep stealing my water bottle. It's just full of water. I placed a screw here, and that's going to keep this bent back a little bit and also in its permanent location. Sorry about the air compressor there. We want the screw in there permanently just because that's holding the branch back. Otherwise, we're going to get kind of mushed back with the durums. Normally, you probably won't need to use the screw, but just in case, there's your options. So the reason I'm misting the trunk a little bit is exactly similar to the way we work uh, deadwood on a buttonwood or a juniper or something like that. Um, we give it a little bit of a mist. That way, the lime sulfur adheres to the tree. Uh, similar process when we're working in with the Durham's Rock Hard Water Putty. Um, even though the product is already wet, we want to give it just a, a little bit of misting in here. That way the product sticks to the sides of the tree rather than just kind of sitting in there and providing an air pocket. Um, this is absolutely not um, incredibly important, and I don't know if it really actually matters. But I think it could. It only takes an extra couple seconds, and it really seems to make the Durham's Rock Hard Water Putty um, just kind of go in a little easier. So now back we are down to our broth. <laughs> Pretty simple stuff. Simply start scooping it in. Forgive the shaky camera here. I'm trying to do this solo. My friend Sam, who usually films our videos, is in Albania eating fish. I don't know why. He just misses me and maybe he'll come back soon. As you can see, it's fairly free flowing. So it just kind of drizzles on down in there. Now, if you've ever been fortunate enough in your life to manufacture at home chocolate chip cookies, you will know that after you make the dough, you make your ball. And then you stick it on the plate and you stick it in the oven. If you want a big cookie, you make a big ball. If you want a little cookie, you make a small ball. If you want a Mickey Mouse shaped, you make a big ball and two small balls. A lot of ball jokes in there, but the idea behind that is Durham's Walk Hard Water Putty has a similar consistency to chocolate chip cookie dough once it begins to dry out. And the reason that that is important is that it means you can kind of push it into the corners and make sure everything gets in there nice and tight. You really want to make sure that it contacts everything. One of the other things I'll do too is, uh, is an example on an area up here just to make sure we get the initial contact point is just smear it in really good. Um, you can use your fingers too. It just rinses right off with any running water. It's not going to kill you. Just going to keep adding it in, adding it in until the cavity is full. And go ahead and pause this so you'll come back in just a few seconds with it relatively mostly done. Um, but you kind of get the idea of what we're doing here. Um, so with that said, be right back. 
Now you can see we cleaned up that bottom hole a bit, but it's still not exactly flush. There's still a little more concaveness to go. Um, that's okay, more Durham's. That one's looking good. Oopsie, I spilled some. Our hole there is starting to fill and the, uh, the screws almost disappeared. You can see it settling down in there. Um, so I thought along the way of a few tricks that might benefit you. You don't have to use a spoon. You can use a fork and knife. Remember, it's like soil. So as you add it, giving it a couple taps will make it settle down. You can also tap inside the product. Similar to, uh, you know, vibrating concrete or vibrating uh, sand or any particulate product in order to uh, make the product settle. So, as you can see, the screws come up even a little bit further. So, we're about three quarters done with everything now. And um, the other uh, thing that will be helpful to you is if you're filling a very giant cavity, such as this large, um, we're putting in probably about two baseballs of worth of product in here. Uh, so two baseball sized fistfuls of Durham's is going to be inside this tree when we are done. You don't have to apply it slowly. You can simply dump it all right in. You do not have to apply a little bit, wait for it to dry, a little bit more, wait for it to dry. Nope. Just go right to town, smush it all in there. If it is too liquidy, and it runs when you are adding a bunch in bulk. Simply add more powdered Durham's to your mix and uh, make it less runny. Um, and if you need it to be more runny, add some water. Additionally, um, there's a little bit of a boo-boo here, but remember boo-boos with Durham's rock hard water putty are not really a problem. Um, I just have some overspray where it came off the spoon. So in case of cleanup, this is all you have to do. You just take water, and it just spritzes right off. Um, additionally, when you get done with the edges, um, actually this one's a better one to show you. We have, um, for the lack of a more adult term, a little nipple here. And just by spritzing some water, you can just watch that reduce to nothing. So once you get enough product in here, you simply spray it afterwards and watch it reduce to the level of where you want it to go. Ta-da! And then the rest of the tree. There we go. Sorry, a couple leaves here and there. The rest of the tree just has everything rinsed right down and off. Once it's dry, if there are not Let's say if it's less than a nickel's size shape, uh, the derms will just kind of chip and crack away. So if you ever get any like little flake here, you just flick the product away. Very easy stuff. But you can see the settling of that one's much better and much more happy. And when it dries, it'll look a lot nicer too. If you've ever poured concrete in a tree, this is the exact same thing, except it doesn't add a ton of weight, expand, contract, crack or suck moisture from your freaking tree. I don't know why they use concrete still. Okay, back to work. Final touches. I should also note that 
this draining into the soil isn't going to hurt a thing either. And for the record, neither does lime sulfur. So quit telling people to stop getting it on the soil. Lime sulfur doesn't hurt shit. Okay, there we go. We're done. Germs rock hard water putty is in. The entire tree line is full to the bottom to the top. It will start to heal over once it dries. If it doesn't start healing over when it dries, just give the little cambium a scratch and you're good to go. Thanks very much for watching. The dogs had a wonderful time. And for reference, that's what you need to buy at Lowe's. Thanks for watching, everyone.